In the year of 258 BC, we had dealt Carthage not one but two decisive blows. With my victory over the great general Hannibal Barca in the Battle of Mediolanum and the annihilation of the Carthaginian navy off the coast of Sagentum, it became evident that Carthage no longer had the capacity to defend its Iberian territories. So, in the following year, Scipio and Legio IV made short work of the remnants of Carthaginian presence in the Iberian Peninsula. Meanwhile, Classes I Victris and Classes II Italica were free to raid the minor coastal settlements in Numidia and Mauritania. We thereby captured the settlements of Eol and gifted it to the Massesli for their loyalty towards the Roman cause. Meanwhile, we liberated the Mauritanians in Siga who were eager to join our cause. Carthage, realizing that their very existence was at stake, desperately sued for peace. But both Scipio and myself agreed that the strategic settlement of Tingis could serve in the future as a base of forward operations for Carthaginian transgressions. And so in the spring of 256 BC, Scipio captured the settlement. With that, the Second Punic War came to a closure and Carthage was forced to pay hefty war indemnities, release the Massili from their client statehood and other humiliating terms befitting their unwarranted provocations against the Republic. Not even a moment of peace was to be enjoyed, however, as the Getuli, whose commerce flourished under the Carthaginians in Mauritania, were unhappy that we put an end to their golden era and consequently declared war on us. Scipio was now besieged in Tingis, but thankfully Legio IV was able to relieve him and drive away the Getuli. In the following season, Scipio crushed their armies and marched on towards Rutabis, conquering the settlement unopposed. Being as there was no possible way to hold on to these territories, we decided to gift these provinces to our newfound Mauritanian allies in the region. Even though my intervention at the right time was crucial to winning the war both at Mediolanum and Sagentum, the victory was attributed to Scipio. I really can't complain. He more than earned my undying respects. His exemplary vision oversaw the acquisition of the resource and manpower-rich provinces of Iberia. In a single swoop, he effectively doubled the extent of the Roman Republic. And if we consider the Roman sphere of influence, which now extends to Mauritania and Numidia, one can say he even tripled it. A true Roman hero deserves a true Roman triumph. And that is exactly what the Senate recalled him to Rome for. Or so I believed. To my astonishment, the ever-paranoid senators, concerned with his rising fame, falsely accused him of embezzling the plunders of war. Outraged at the deceit, Scipio left Roma and retired to his countryside seat in Campania to find his own small measure of peace, which so many of us desire and only few of us ever find. In the following year, however, news reached me that he had died under suspicious circumstances. In his will, he demanded not to be buried in Rome but in Campania instead. He also demanded to have the following inscribed on his tombstone, In grata patria ne osa quidem habebis, Ungrateful fatherland, you shall not even possess my bones. With Scipio no longer in the picture, the prestigious Legio I was left leaderless, and so I was reassigned to command it. While my old veterans were overjoyed to see me back in command, I can't help but feel a burning lump in my throat at the bittersweet events that led to this reunion. However, I had no time to mourn the fate of Scipio and was soon ordered to invade Illyricum to put an end to the menace of piracy in the Adriatic. Meanwhile, the situation in the Hellenic mainland was turbulent to say the least. Sparta, the Antigonids, the Thessalian League and Athens were locked in a grueling war. This sort of instability threatened our holdings in Apollonia and damaged our prospects of trade with the Greeks. However, as they say, when one door closes, another opens. With the Greek in fighting, we may have an easy path to conquering the Hellenic mainland through our age-old Roman policy of divide tempera. What is up my friends and how's it going and welcome back to the 8th episode of our Let's Play series as Roma with your fellow comrade Summary. Carthage has negotiated a peace with the Numidians however we can drag them right back into the war. And in the turn between the turns we have given the Maori the entire province of Mauritania. 
And uh, we are still at war with Carthage, so let's just go ahead and move Legio for Hispana to attack this army over here. It's quite an easy battle, so we can simply auto-resolve it, enslave all the captives, and we can send Legio for Hispana to garrison Carthago Nova. Meanwhile, over here we have classes 1 Victress and can finally reach Panormos. And for now, what I have done is I have gone ahead and renamed all of the Iberian regions into their Roman equivalents, such as Ebosus, Carthago Nova, Cordoba, and Gades. And uh, speaking of regions and provinces, let's have a quick look at all of our regions. As you can see, most of them, I am pretty happy with the building. That's good. Meanwhile, we do have our Legatus Latium over here in the province of Latium with some first class units. And the idea is to disband them in the various regions so as to give them a bit of a population boost. And we are going to deploy him back into Roma. Disband that final unit and... Getting more population is very important, as you can see over here in Roma, we have a population of 68,516, which means it is densely populated, and therefore it gives a 30% increase to all income. Uh, if we look at Eretium, you can see it only has 58,632, therefore it's only giving a 15% increment to all income. So we want to try to also improve the population of each of these settlements so that we can maximize our income speaking of income as you can see over here latium is now making 55,000 denarii per turn and that is only going to get even more powerful as we uh, level up our technology as well as of course um, you know the buildings within the provinces of latium before we hop into any further battles, let's have a quick look at our politics. All of our political rivals seem to be quite loyal. In fact, there is no threat at all of a succession. So that is pretty good. Meanwhile, our characters over here have leveled up a fair bit. So what we are going to do is we are going to further improve the authority as well as the zeal of our other characters. And this character on a vacation finally to improve her own cunning. Once we're done that, uh, you know, things should be looking quite good. Meanwhile, the objective of this episode is to declare war on the Hellenic world, conquer the entirety of Macedonia, as well as Hellas, at least the mainland, as of course we do take Crete much later on in history. And of course, we are also going to declare war against the Illyrian factions and deal with the Illyrian piracy threat once and for all. We have Legio 1 Italica over here back under the command of our family leader. And we are going to go ahead and attack the Daorsi. We have a trade agreement with them, so we are going to cancel that trade agreement. And then we are going to simply declare war against him. We'll take our reliability rating slightly low. And uh, now we can pretty much just auto resolve this one we don't have to fight it and 90% is quite good but we are going to go ahead and loot the settlement and with that we have wiped out the faction of Daorsi meanwhile we are going to move our dignitary in towards Deliminum and the idea is to try to get this using our timber trade region sub mod peacefully from the uh, Scordisi let's go ahead and quickly dismantle all the buildings we do not need we are going to build a docks in Ierda, and I will explain why that is. And that's basically because if you look at the Sea of Adri or the Adriatic Sea, we have a minus 42% wealth from all maritime commerce due to piracy. And that is because we have trade ports which we need for our income. And each of these trading harbors uh, gives us a plus 25% piracy in the local sea region. As you can see that is the fifth debuff and pretty much what do military ports do is that they counter that by giving a minus 30 percent piracy penalties in the local sea region so as you can see once this port will be completed in about 11 turns uh, this minus 42 piracy in the mare adriaticum will drop to minus 12. 
which means we will pretty much almost double our maritime commerce income. Meanwhile, a quick look of what's going on over here in Macedonia. As you can see, we have two of our armies, Legio 2 Fratensis, as well as Legio 1 Augusta. We also have Legio 5 Macedoni uh, Macedonica in Apollonia, and it is recruiting its final Cretan archers. And after that, we will be looking to declare war against the Hellenic world. A quick look at our diplomacy. We can see that Sparta is going to be our major ally in this war against the Hellenic world. And that is because they are pretty much at war with all of the Hellenic factions such as Athenae, the Thessalian League, the Antigonids, the RDI. So we pretty much want to, you know, use Sparta to kind of declare war on all of the factions. Let's have a quick look at our characters we can level up some army tradition so let's go for that legio roma invicta which gives further upkeep cost reduction and we can also get the indomitable legionaries which gives extra melee attack and melee defense for all very heavy infantry units apart from that we can also get our veteran legionaries which gives a plus 15 unit experience per turn and a plus 3 weapon damage inflicted by all heavy infantry units so that is quite powerful as well as you can see that has already taken our weapon damage up by one point however that being said and done i think i can go ahead and end the turn before i do that i'm going to quickly see if i can peace out the carthaginians and the carthaginians are going to keep declaring war against me because because of the script that i am using the realistic expansion sub mod i could ask I could ask the Numidians to join the war against the Carthaginians and they won't join. Perhaps with a promise of payment they will join. Fantastic. We also can ask the Masesli to join the war against the Carthaginians. They are moderate, wonderful. And now perhaps the Carthaginians will piece us out. They are on high so we are going to take our money back from them. Wonderful. And we're going to have to keep an eye on Carthadash, make sure that they don't have any major armies in the region uh, capable of invading Sicilia. However, that being said and done, I think I can go ahead and end the turn and I will see you all in the next turn. Alright, welcome to the next turn. We have a conflict of orders. Rumors has it that a patrician senator regularly dips his fingers into the city's tax revenue in order to enrich himself. Soon after the plebs rise in anger and gather at the forum, we must act quickly. Um, we cannot piss off any of our patricians as at the same time we cannot piss off the plebs. So what we are going to do is we are going to investigate. And the Carthaginians have pieced out once again. Uh, with our Numidian allies and uh, they are once again at war with us instead so what we can do is we can hope to call in the Numidians once again to join the war we can't that's interesting so they're already at war with the Carthaginians uh, perhaps the Masesli are the ones who peaced out and these guys are also still at war with the Carthaginians well, that's fine, I guess. We can't really piece off the Carthaginians. Let us just uh, stay put and hope that they cannot attack us. Uh, we do have a stack of Masesli just outside the settlement of Carthadash, so that might keep the Carthaginians in check. Meanwhile, let's have a quick look at our provinces. Um, we want to build a temple over here, upgrade the port or the main settlement over here. We are going to move our army back towards Patavium for that replenishment. And now that our dignitary is in a Deliminum, we can go ahead and deploy him. We have a 100% chance to get the settlement for a price of 20,000 denarii. We are going to go ahead, deploy him. And in the next couple of turns, we should get the province or the settlement of Deliminum peacefully. Meanwhile, the development over here at Pella, as you can see, is that the RDAI are busy besieging the settlement. Um... Which means we are going to have to stay put over here in the south. Um, another quick look at some of our other provinces. We can level up this temple over here. We don't need to. We have really, really good uh, public order over there. And what we are going to do is we're going to move our dignitary up towards Tarako. Since we have 
uh, gained Latin culture in Baetica as well as Hispania. And now we are going to attempt to do the same in the province of Tarraconensis. Meanwhile, the public order seems to be dipping in Baetica, but we can manage that. Quick look at politics. We are overly influential in the Senate with a 51% influence. We want to get that down below 50, um, 51. So we are going to send some of our political rivals to improve the public order in some of the provinces. And that should hopefully bring down the influence and in some cases actually brings it up. Which is kind of weird, although it should really bring it down. We're also going to send some of our characters to improve the food that we gain. And that has brought the influence back down. And hopefully in the coming turns we should be able to... Um, we should be able to get that influence down to a respectable uh, position. Meanwhile over here in the province of Pella, let's have a quick look at uh, the regional supplies. Uh, the regional supplies seem to be quite good. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to encourage... I'm actually going to encourage the RDAI to attack the settlement of Pella. And uh, hopefully uh, they will fight and they will lose that battle. And in order to do that, I am actually going to ask the Spartans to join the war against the Antagonists. And this is pretty much Divide et Empera right here. Uh, meanwhile, what we have to do is we want to also attack the RDAI and take out Dyrachium. But we will have to wait for a next turn uh, once this army is done making a fool of itself. However, that being said and done, I think I am ready to end the turn, but we can also level up some characters. So let's go ahead and do that. Get that extra food gain as well as the province gain. The public order is not really required. Uh, meanwhile, classes 2 Italica has also leveled up. We can go ahead and get that extra upkeep cost, extra ramming. And uh, can get some ancillaries for him as well. And let's not forget to level up some of our characters using our politics. So what we are going to do is improve once again the zeal and the authority of this character. And send this character on a vacation to improve her cunning. And as you can see, slowly but steadily, this character is gaining a lot of stats. So without any further ado, let us go ahead, end the turn, and I will see you all in the future when I am ready to conquer Pella for myself. And perhaps even attack the RDAI. Alright, here we are. The RDAI have decided to attack Pella. We're going to decline the attack, and they will lose... And then in the next turn, we can pretty much attack the army that's outside Pella. And then easily conquer the settlement. Alright, welcome to the next turn. Some of our characters have leveled up, so let's go ahead and improve. Meanwhile, the Carthaginians have once again pieced out with the Numidians. They're going to keep doing this. Um, let's go ahead and upgrade our Dignitary. Um, and go for that extra research rate. However, we can get... The wealth from industry instead is what I want. Meanwhile, Legio 5 Macedonica has also improved. So can go ahead and get some abilities for that general. Meanwhile, get some ancillaries as well. Perfect. And now it would be a good time to attack Macedon. However, before we do that, let's quickly do deal with our politics. Improve uh, the zeal as well as the authority of this character and of course send her on a vacation and that looks good meanwhile our political parties look to be quite loyal towards us and we do have a single carthaginian fleet that is making its way towards sicily we are going to deal with that meanwhile we can also upgrade the settlement of Caralis. we're going to take another temple and the idea is to get the uh, temple that gives us extra research rate Okay, perfect. And uh, pretty much as far as technology is concerned, we are researching improved plumbing, which will give us access to level 4 main settlement buildings, which means we will be able to double the income in Latium, more or less. And after that, we are going to focus on getting the advanced barracks construction because we are soon going to hit our Marian reforms and we want to be able to access some of those auxiliary units. Meanwhile, let's move our dignitary up here in Hispania 
towards Tarakonensis and go ahead and deploy him. Quick look up our dignitary up here. In the next turn he will acquire the settlement of Delaminium. Meanwhile Allegio 1 Italica has replenished a fair bit so we can move him back towards Yadera. Wonderful. And uh, we also have a pirate fleet over here in the region. And uh, we are going to get rid of those Illyrian pirates pretty soon. Um, however, before we go ahead and attack the Macedonians, what we are going to have to do is actually attack this Carthaginian fleet over here. And he is going to retreat. And maybe we can continue or push our attack. What are we looking here? We're looking at a fleet, so it's going to be quite a good naval battle. So we are going to quick save over here, hop into the naval battle, and I will see you guys over there. Alright, welcome to the naval battle. Let us begin our deployment. We are going to form up... I'm sorry, let... Uh, quick controls. Just... Perfect. We are going to deploy in four lines. And the reason being is we want a reserve so as to react to any reinforcing fleets which we know are going to take part in this battle. So we definitely want a, some depth so as to react to that. And as you can see, we already have enemy fleets coming in from the left. Meanwhile, we are going to select our front line of ships to attack those ships over here and we are going to realign our reserve ships to face off against the enemy fleet. The enemy fleet is pretty significant. There's nothing to scoff at. And then we move our general or our admiral. Um, they do have some pretty good ships and this is classes 2 which means their ramming is going to be a little bit weaker than classes 1. And just pay close attention to of course the you know, uh, row hard ability. I'm going to swap up the orders over here since you can see some of it is being entangled. And very quickly we can hit that row hard, make sure that these ships quickly get rid of the ships that they have to deal with. And we are going to attack that ship over there. Meanwhile over here things are looking quite good. Go for it. These ships can... And the danger is for this ship, really. We're gonna have to see how he manages. Keep hitting that ship. Well, you can hit here. You can hit there. You can hit this ship. Over here. Hit that one. Hit that one. And hit that one. Quick look at some of the ships over here. Make sure that... We are done dispatching all of the enemy transport ships as best as we can. Okay, wonderful. Okay. And we might lose a ship over here. We're not too careful. Go ahead, keep hitting. Okay, wonderful. And we have lost one ship. Let's go ahead and keep sending our ships over there. Meanwhile, our reserve ships can go ahead and hit this one. Quick movement over here. General has done a good job. Okay, we have lost yet another ship. However, we have dealt with the Carthaginian ships over there. That is good news. Seven. Get a general in there. Meanwhile, we can hit this ship. And it seems like the Carthaginians are going to retreat with that. And with that, we have done quite well. So I am going to go ahead and end the battle. And I will see you all in the campaign. Alright, down goes the Carthaginian fleet. We have lost four ships. However, it's pretty uh, good trade-off. We can go ahead and slave some of the captives. Classes 2 Italica has leveled up. We are going to send him towards Caralis. 
then we can't because we are actually in range of the port of Carthadash. So we are going to besiege it and then withdraw. Now we can move classes to Italica. Meanwhile, move classes one Victress towards Aggregentum. Perfect. And now that we have classes to Italica over here, we can go ahead and get those four ships that we lost in that battle. And uh, now we should also get extra ship health, which is going to be quite helpful in the battles to come. However, that being said and done, we can finally attack the Macedonians over here. We are going to go ahead and attack this army. It's going to retreat. And uh, that's pretty unfortunate, but we can attack the settlements. A very good auto resolve. The city has been hit multiple times during the end turn. So we can just simply auto resolve this one. And with that, down goes Pella. It is finally a Roman settlement. Go ahead and we can simply loot the settlement. Wonderful. And uh, we are going to dismantle all of the buildings we don't need. And over here, what we are going to do is we are going to build this into a port. And the fastest way to do it is to actually dismantle it. Go ahead and build the scriptorium. As well as over here, we are going to finally build up um, to get some sanitation building. And now that being said and done, we can also attack the RDAI. The way we want to do this is we actually want to attack both of them as much as we can. So, alright, let's actually use the Spartans once again, join the war against the RDAI. They agree untrustworthy because I think I had a trade agreement with them. They are going to retreat, however they will not be able to retreat far enough. We are going to chase them with Legia 1 Augusta. It's a very good auto resolve. Let's go ahead, quickly auto resolve that one. And down goes yet another army over here. Things are shaping up quite nicely in. In, uh, in Hellas. We are going to go ahead, declare or lay siege to Dyrrachium. And it's a very good auto resolve, however, it can be better if we move up Legio 1 Augusta to support. And we should have an auto resolve of about 92%. So we're going to go ahead and auto resolve this one as well. And with that, we have taken over the settlement of Dyrrachium. We are going to go ahead once again loot the settlement. Quickly dismantle all the buildings we do not require. Build up a military port over there. With that, I think I am pretty good for this turn. Let's just have a quick look at all of our provinces. Everything seems to be fine. Uh, as far as politics is concerned, we have already done it for this turn. We do have a pirate uh, fleet over here that we will have to deal with. And uh, go ahead, upgrade the settlement of Apollonia so that it doesn't get attacked by the pirate fleets. And then we are going to move one of our fleets to deal with that pirate fleet in the coming turns. However, the next move would be to invade Larissa. Speaking of Larissa, we do have we do have a RDI attack over here, which we are going to try to assassinate uh, the High King, therefore wiping out the faction. However. I don't think he can reach Apollonia, so we are quite good for this turn and we can pretty much end the turn. But before that, let's have a quick look and see if we can I piece out the Carthaginians. They are on moderate, they will not agree. But maybe if we can get the Numidians to join the war against Carthage, then Carthage will piece us out. And they have, so that's good. Perfect. With that, we can go ahead and end the turn. But as you can see, our economy is looking even more powerful because we are improving on our slave income over here. And as you can see, uh, overall, the province of Latium is only making 15,000 denarii per turn. But because of the modifiers of tax rate, slave income, uh, which is counteracting the empire maintenance, we are getting an overall of 57,000 denarii, so that is extremely powerful. Meanwhile, the growth rate in Latium is 45, which means I could turn down my taxes to get a bit more of growth rate. 
and uh, the better your growth rate the more faster you can level up a province and the settlements within that province and get more income so definitely that's a good thing to do meanwhile as far as some of the politics is concerned we do want to send some of our political rivals to improve the public order in certain provinces so that we can lower our influence further that seems to be good Meanwhile, we can send another character to get some food, preferably in a province that has a lot of settlements. And I think that province for us would be Hispania for now. Let's go ahead and do that. Food-wise, we're looking quite good. We are not in any food shortage whatsoever. So with that, let's go ahead, end the turn, and I will see you all in the future when we are ready to declare war against the Thessalian League. Alright, welcome to the future gonna check if our characters have leveled up none of them have leveled up we have recruited some more armies and generals basically in preparation for you know just leveling them up so that they can get some uh, nice uh, skills that will help them uh, at the moment we're not going to be looking to build up any armies for them just yet because we will soon hit our marian reforms so we are just going to just simply stay put with those guys. Meanwhile, a quick look at our provinces. Everything seems to be fine. Uh, we are making a little bit less income per turn in Latium. And that is because one of our governor generals has died and it has been replaced. So we're going to have to hope that we can quickly get back up to speed. Meanwhile, we have completed researching the improved plumbing. So we are in the process of leveling up all of our sanitation buildings as well as our main settlement buildings in Latium. And in about 12 turns, the uh, um, income of Latium will double. And as of now, we are, re uh, we are researching in the management technology tree under the military tree. And we are trying to get that advanced barracks construction so that we can get access to our level 3 auxiliary barracks. Meanwhile, in, um, in the province of Illyria, we have uh, successfully managed to take over Deluminium from the Scordisii. And uh, what we are going to do is we're going to see if we can initiate any sort of agreements with them. And they are not interested. Greetings Let's see if we can get a trade I agreement with the Tribali. That's great. They will pay us for it. I will take we can also do that with welcome. the Tolistobogii. Get a non-aggression as well, thereby I protecting our Hellenic our uh, provinces. Uh, we are at war with Carthage, so we're going to see if we can... No, we are not at war with Carthage. That's good. As far as uh, factions we are at war with, I think we are pretty much only at war with the Macedonians and the rest are pretty much pirates we don't care about however up here in Macedoni uh, Macedonica as you can see um, Legia 2 Fratensis is fully replenished Legia 1 Augusta is close to Larissa and we also have a Legia 5 Macedonica close by so we are going to move up our armies into the province then we are going to lay siege to Larissa and we could just simply declare war. All of our allies join. And it's a very good auto resolve. However, I do want to fight a battle. So we are going to try to do that with Legia 1 Augusta. Perfect. And now we are going to push the attack with Legia 1 Augusta. And I am going to switch off the control a large army. So I'm just going to keep that on. A quick save over here. Hop into the battle and I will see you guys in the battle. Alright, welcome to the battle. Let us start our deployment. Pretty nice a plane over here we have. I'm gonna put our general in group one. Meanwhile, get our archers and missile units in two groups on either flanks. Equites extraordinary on the left flank. Uh, we have our equites normal on that right flank. And our next group of missile troops in group five gonna select our Hastati unit real quick with the Samnitiki variants on the flanks. We're gonna do the same for the Principe units. And finally we are going to do the same for the Triaria units. Put them up over there. Perfect. Now what we are going to do is we're gonna select all of the other units that we don't need. Put them up behind so that we have a clean working space over here. And uh what we want to do is we want to 
increase the width of all of these units like so i'm gonna do it the same with the principes and we're gonna do it the same with the triari perfect gonna slightly move our principes to the left okay i'm happy with that now we're gonna select all of these units holding down the control key and while holding down the control key hit the down arrow key to reduce the width and there we go you have your roman quincux formation perfectly done really quickly however uh, next up we want to put our general behind want to get our velites and we are going to make them a bit more narrow and of course our archers as well i'm gonna put them on either flank we're gonna do the same on the right flank perfect and we get our archers as well on the right flank perfect next up we're going to put our equites on that right flank and equites extraordinary on the left flank go ahead and start the battle and we can slowly move up our army towards what will be a pretty pretty epic battle and as my doubts have been uh, clarified it seems like in a 41 stack army you cannot fight both armies uh, simultaneously so the maximum units you can have on the battlefield at once is 41 all right and while our army is moving towards the enemy i have gone ahead and modded up and gotten hd models thanks to celticus benjamin oh sorry benjin and other modders who have gotten um you know we pretty much worked really hard on making these high definition models as you can see over here with our Hastati and if you move over to our Hastati Samnitiki just look at the clarity and the HD of those models meanwhile the Principes as you can see just look at the clarity of that chainmail this very nice asset over here beautiful looking stuff and of course we also have our regular Principes some really nice assets and finally of course we have our triarii with the best looking equipment really professional uh, armor as well as uh, some really beautiful cuirasses um, meanwhile it's also the same for our velites and of course our Christian archers as you can see they have that high definition armor and if we take a quick look at our equites extraordinary sorry you can see that once again these guys also have really high definition armor however that being said and done let us go ahead fast forward until our army gets into position and while they do that let's have a quick look at the enemy uh, formation we do have some greek hoplites over here pretty much a hoplite front line and they do have a bunch of pikemen towards the towards their left flank or so towards our right flank we're gonna have to watch out for those guys and while some of these other units are pretty mediocre looking at the general they have a fairly respectable general um some missile cavalry so we have to watch out for that on the left flank they have a couple more missile cavalry and of course a couple more of that medium shock cavalry so all in all it's a pretty even battle and uh, we're gonna have to fight this one really to the best of our abilities now that the enemy has sort of engaged us let us quickly run into our formation get up real close as close as we can and uh, hopefully we get to see some movement from the enemy horsemen okay all right the whole enemy army is moving up so i am going to try to quickly get into our into our formations meanwhile over here we can send two of these units to charge into that unit on the right flank um things are looking quite well let's one of our units has used all its ammunition okay principes uh, astati are nearly done with all of their ammunition we are going to go ahead quickly charge try to break up the hoplite line as much as we can and in order to do that you're actually going to have to charge into these units quick selection of group five we are going to move our cavalry to hit there 
Group 5, we can see if we can hit some of these pike units. They are the most dangerous of units. We've done quite well over here on the left flank. Alright, perfect. And now we have a unit over here that's facing its flank towards us, so that is good. We are going to select group 2 and start firing at those units on the flanks. Make sure that we select our guard mode on. Move out our equites real quick. Get these principes onto the flanks. Okay. Wonderful. And we can move up our Hastati to engage over there. Get our Prince Base over here. And as you can see, we are already done with one of the Pike units, which means we can move on to the next Pike unit soon enough. Do that. Keep moving our Equites out of there. Get our Cretian Archers to hit that Numidian Cavalry. Double tap on three to get ourselves to the other side of the battlefield. And we have a couple of our Cretian archers over here who can fire into the backs of those units. Get our Prince Base around. And we are going to try to maneuver our cavalry. Meanwhile, these Cretian archers can pull up behind. What we want to do is attack. Get our Prince Base up narrow over here. Go ahead, pull back all of our units. All of our missile units need to pull back. Get a couple of our equities out and around so that they can charge into the backs of those units. Wonderful. These units have done quite well. A quick look of what's going on over there on the right flank. This unit can also surround the enemy. And we want to fire all of our missiles into the back of those uh, phalangites. And this unit has also flanked, so that's good. Select group 5, put them on that skirmish mode. Get behind. We have a bunch of Triaria units that can support us over here. Charge our horsemen into all of these units. Okay. okay, and now we can charge into the backs of these Numidians. Fantastic. Alright, we are nearly done wiping out this unit. We can ignore this unit, move to the side over here. Hit this unit, let this unit take damage from behind. Meanwhile, pull out all of our equities extraordinary. Go ahead, attack this unit. Number two, you can go ahead, attack over here. Double tap on four. This Numidian cavalry should lose quite decisively, quite, quite quickly. Okay. We have our center is breaking up, so we're going to have to reinforce it with our principes. Let's go ahead and do that. Meanwhile, over here, we are going to have to charge all of our cavalry into the backs of those units. Have a bunch of archers over here who can shoot at the sides of those units. Over here, we have dealt with that unit. Group 4 can come back and charge into the enemy units. Meanwhile, this missile infantry can also go ahead and shoot at this unit in the back. I'm going to charge up our Triarii to hit that unit in the back as well. Quickly charge over here. We're nearly done with the enemy left flank. Move out our Pedites. Charge into the back of this unit.
Meanwhile, this phalangite unit is done, so let's go ahead and charge into this unit. Use our Kree snatchers to hit that phalanx unit. Get this unit out here. You can charge the general, you can go ahead and charge over here. Wonderful. With that, the general should lose decisively. We're gonna go ahead and charge into the flanks of these units. Make sure they take a lot of damage. Left flank is nearly done. We can go ahead and keep charging all of our troops into the backs over there. A Aikote should be done over here. We'll go ahead and charge over there. Meanwhile, our Extraordinary are done mopping up the General almost by the looks of it. Let's have a look at that. Beautiful. And with that, we are going to win the battle quite easily. The enemy general is dead. The entire army is retreating. So I will see you all in the campaign. And down goes that Thessalian army. It has retreated once before, so it should pretty much be wiped out. Doesn't seem like it is going to be wiped out. But we are going to try to chase it as best as we can. And we can just simply auto-resolve this one. It is at 100%. And we have wiped out that Thessalian army. And with that, it seems like our general has leveled up. So let's go ahead and give him some skills. Gonna get some of that. Meanwhile, even uh, as far as the army is concerned, we have leveled up over there as well. So we can improve the abilities of this army. Go ahead, put him on patrol stand so that he replenishes a lot faster. As you can see, even though some of our units took a lot of damage, it's only going to take three turns to replenish them up to full. Well, a quick look over here, we do have about enough population to deal with that. And this should be quite an easy auto-resolve, so let's go ahead, quickly auto-resolve it. And we do want to attack Athens as quickly as possible. So what I am going to do is I'm going to peacefully occupy Larissa, and we have leveled up in Imperium as well. Uh, the good news is, in Larissa... We have a uh, horse building, so we can actually get access to stables. So let's go ahead and convert that to a stables and then go ahead and demolish this building once that stables is complete. However, with that, it seems like I can be done with this turn by the looks of it. And uh, of course, we have um, sort of kind of uh, leveled up in the Imperium, so we can get some extra abilities. Uh, such as our provincial edict. So let's go ahead, uh, put the loyalty over here and instead change this one to the sell slaves edict so that we can keep our slave population under control as we don't want too much slave population in our um, in our food provinces. And we can do that over here as well. Quick look at our politics. Uh, parties are quite loyal. The summary, as you can see over here, we have used all of our edicts. We have a couple more governors that we can get. So what I am going to do is I am going to recruit one extra governor over here in Taraconensis. Get the tax rate as well as the cultural conversion guy. And meanwhile, I'm going to get another governor over here in, um, in Macedonica when I can afford to do so. As you can see, my economy is pretty low for the moment. However, with that, I think I can go ahead and end the turn. And I will see you all in the next turn or in the future when I am ready to take on the Athenians, uh, which will probably be the final Hellenic faction before the Spartans. Alright, welcome to the next turn. The Marian reforms have fired, but we aren't going to upgrade our troops until we take down Carthage. We have to be very careful about that. Meanwhile, over here, we can go ahead and have a quick look at our provinces. We are still suffering as far as our economy is concerned. We do have a taxation on medium. However, the main problem is, of course, our Latium is pulling in a lot less income due to the death of one of our governor generals. However, we can go ahead and attack Athens and I am going to auto resolve it because we are running out of time. And uh, we can move all of our armies into the province of Athenae. And uh, with that, we can attack Athens. Just a quick look to see if we have any sort of trade agreement with them, as well as non-aggressions. 
We do not want to get a reliability hit. And we are going to ask the Spartans to join the war against the Athenians. Has made us unreliable. However, it is what it is. It's a pretty good auto resolve, so I am going to go ahead and auto resolve this one. And uh, we can simply occupy the settlement once again. I don't want to sack it because I do want that replenishment as best as I can. And I'll quickly get rid of this unit if we can. I believe he should be the faction leader. There he is. He is the faction leader. Perhaps we could assassinate him. And the chance is really low, but it is worth a shot. And we have failed, so that's not too bad, I guess. Um, Let's go ahead quickly put our army in the patrol stands to gain some replenishment. Meanwhile, in Athens, what we want to do is we want this to be our second economic province, since we do require, you know, a boost to our economy. What we are going to do is uh, we have a couple of dignitaries, I believe, that we could use. And uh, we haven't really hired the dignitary over here, so let's go ahead and hire this dignitary for that extra replenishment rate. Meanwhile, over here, we are slowly converting the province of Illyricum. Uh, we have 24 Latin culture. And over here, we can go ahead and deploy this dignitary as well in Taraku. Further assist with that cultural conversion. It's going to be quite tough to culturally convert um, Taraconensis. However, it is what it is. And uh, before we go ahead, end the turn, we're going to see if we can level up any of our characters. Can go ahead, level up these characters. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, quick look at our army traditions just to make sure. And uh, yeah, definitely we want uh, to get this as well as Lictorus Sparta has leveled up, which is what we want. And we are going to give him um, abilities to decrease that empire maintenance. That's quite critical, actually. We also have another dignitary that has leveled up and get further empire maintenance, further research rate. Well, as that, perfect. That should. Uh, with that, I think pretty much we are done with this turn. I do want to save up some money so that we can quickly change our armies into the Marian armies once we are done taking out Sparta and of course uh, once we fight that third Punic war however with that I think I am going to go ahead end the turn and I will see you all in the future when I am ready to attack Sparta all right welcome to the future our economy is still struggling a little bit and uh, much we can do about that we are generating the maximum we can and uh, unfortunately, that maximum just simply isn't enough. However, in Hellas, we have managed to move our armies closer to Sparta. Sparta does have a very decent armies. And um, what we are going to do is we could auto-resolve this, but I also want to fight it out. So, I mean, like, let's go ahead first, declare the war. And as you can see, it's a very favorable auto result, but I do want to fight it because it's going to be a very interesting battle. As you can see, Sparta has the new Spartan Thorax Pikemen and a bunch of good units, so it should be quite a good battle. However, what we are going to do is we are going to just force, force some of these Spartans away and uh, perhaps go ahead and kill this guy over here. Wonderful. And then perhaps we can even kill uh, this one over here. Another 100% battle. Perfect. Now we want to move our troops away so that they do not reinforce and so that in the end turn Sparta will actually attack my army and uh, leave their settlement. However, with that, some of our characters have leveled up, so let's go ahead and give them the ability. This is going to be a future general of the army. Legio Six Victress is also a future general. Uh, meanwhile, I think we have also our Legatus of Achaea who has leveled up. So let's go ahead and give him that empire maintenance boost and uh, perhaps the tax rate, public order. 
and some more public order he is slowly yes. making his way towards Athenae and uh, pretty much uh, everything else is looking quite good Carthadash still at war with us let's see if we can piece him out it, he is on moderate and he does accept so that's great we can go ahead and quickly end the turn and I will see you all in the end turn when the Spartans decide to attack me and so the Spartans have decided to opt for peace but we are not going to have it they are not going to attack us which is interesting which means pretty much in the next turn I will have to auto resolve it unfortunately um, due to the fact that I don't want to wait too long before the Spartans can attack us I mean I could just pretty much hold them out in that settlement and uh, pretty much wipe them out even without having to fight and uh, we're gonna have to just auto resolve it in the next turn unfortunately welcome to the final turn of this episode we are going to go for the military development so that it helps our research a little bit and uh, Okay, meanwhile we could attack the Spartans over here, it's pretty even, I could fight out the battle like so, however I am just going to stay there for just a little bit more, perhaps, or I should actually just auto resolve it, you know, and pretty much conclude the Macedonian Wars. Okay, go ahead, get all of our armies close by. Auto resolve it, very favorable auto resolve. 93%. Go ahead. And the Spartan faction has been wiped out. We can move our Legio 1 Augusta back towards Apollonia. Meanwhile, we can move our other uh, Macedonica back towards. Let's see the population in Larissa. It seems to be quite good, so we can pretty much just level up as well over here or replenish rather. We are going to put our armies on patrol stand so that we can maximize our replenishment for the end turn. And the most important thing of all of this is that um, we want to move our armies down towards Sicilia. We will be going all the way down towards Sicilia because in the next episode we will be initiating the Third Punic War and declaring war against Carthage and destroying them once and for all. However, let's Deliver see if we can peace out the Carthaginians. They are on high. They might even pay us for it. Which is good because we desperately need that income. And a uh, quick look over here. We can upgrade some of the settlements. Um, we want to demolish this barracks over here. Go ahead, upgrade some more. And upgrade this as well. And with that, we are out of cash. And... Uh, Quick look at all of our provinces, nothing much we can do. We have leveled up over here, so we can actually build another temple over there. And I think we don't have to upgrade Sparta just as yet. What we need to do is actually build another temple over here to help with that cultural conversion in Taraconensis. Uh, meanwhile, Legatus Achaea is finally reached Achaea, so he is going to deploy in Athenae and we, we are looking to make a decent amount of income once again which is great and eventually we should be able to get our economy up and running once again uh, we do have a spy over here in the region and uh, pretty much the spy is going to be spying in Asia because our next target after the third Punic War would be the conquest of Hispania as well as Asia and uh Yes, with that, I think I am going to go ahead and end the episode. So I thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. And if you like the video, please like the video. And don't forget to subscribe if you are interested for more. Peace and love.